We're gonna start talking about the synergy between hyperbaric and other modalities. Hyperbaric is a, an amazing tool, but there are so many great tools out there. Today, we're gonna to talk about the synergy between hyperbaric oxygen and red light therapy. Red light therapy is another amazing modality. There's a ton of information out there, but what's the synergy between the two? And here's really what it comes down to. Hyperbaric's got an amazing effect on inflammation, lowering inflammation. Hyperbaric's got an amazing effect at upregulating antioxidants in our body to help deal with free radicals. And hyperbaric's got this amazing effect on improving mitochondrial performance because oxygen is the last electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, which is the system our mitochondria uses to make energy. The electron transport chain is a process of moving electrons down their concentration gradient, and each one is helping to generate energy within the mitochondria so that the mitochondria can make ATP. ATP is the energy currency of your cells. When we make increased levels of ATP, your cells have more energy to do all the different tasks that your cells need to do. In order to get electrons from one carrier to the next, there are different molecules that are ultimately in charge of moving electrons from step one to step two, from step two to step three, from step three to step four, et cetera. One of those mobile electron carriers that moves electrons from step three to four specifically is a molecule called cytochrome C. Cytochrome C, as it sounds, cytochrome means it's light sensitive. Specifically, it's sensitive to red and near infrared and infrared frequencies. And as you stimulate cytochrome C, you allow it to move faster in between those two complexes and really make sure that you're getting electrons from step three to step four, step three to step four. The faster you can move those electrons, ultimately and unbind nitric oxide and get electrons to the next step, the more concentration gradient you can create, which means ultimately the more ATP you can create. If you looked at the mitochondria like an energy factory, which is ultimately what it is, there are different steps along the way that become rate limiting steps. Oxygen is one of the rate limiting steps to ATP production. As we increase the amount of oxygen we drive into the cell, we can increase the amount of ATP that cell can make. Cytochrome C is another rate limiting step of mitochondrial performance or rate limiting step of ATP production. And so the faster we can get cytochrome C to pass those electrons, the more ATP that mitochondria is going to be able to make. And so when you expose a tissue, sometimes red light could be used focused for, let's say for healing an elbow or a knee. So we might use focused LED or focused laser red light in order to get that one particular area of your body to start upregulating energy production. Or we might use those panels or red light bed that you're laying and exposing the majority of your, or your entire body to this red light therapy. Whatever tissue ultimately you're exposing to red light, all the mitochondria that are getting stimulated inside that system, you're gonna have that upregulation of cytochrome C, and so you're gonna have that upregulation of ATP formation, energy production inside those cells. If you're finding this information helpful, please click a like button, please subscribe to the channel, please tell a friend, share this information. We're really trying to have a positive impact on people's health, and I'm hoping that this information is helpful for people either who are having health challenges and unable to find solutions thus far, or potentially people that don't have health issues, but they're doing everything they can to avoid it and looking for solutions to improving their health, optimizing their biology, and just keeping a high quality of life for as many years as possible. Red light therapy also increases melatonin. And so as the mitochondria is able to increase melatonin, it's going to be able to help deal with any of the free radical damage inside the mitochondria. Again, mitochondria are making free radicals as a normal part of cell metabolism. That's totally expected. It's an appropriate byproduct of mitochondrial performance, but that if it builds up, those free radicals could damage the mitochondria or could damage the cell. Hyperbaric oxygen increases superoxide dismutase and catalase and glutathione, which are some of the ways that our cells are able to deal with that free radical damage. Red light therapy helps to stimulate melatonin, and that's a totally different way. Another type of antioxidant that could also help us deal with the free radical damage. And so again, there's great synergy between hyperbaric's ability to minimize free radical damage and red light therapy's ability to reduce 
free radical down. If you need more details about some of the benefits of hyperbaric oxygen, please take a look at some of our earlier videos on hyperbaric and its effect on cell signaling, hyperbaric and its effect on the mitochondria, hyperbaric benefits, hyperbaric mechanisms. If you look at those videos, it will answer all of the questions you could possibly ever want to know about how hyperbaric works and what the long-term benefits are. Lastly is the effect on the inflammation. We know that hyperbaric has a mechanism for dealing with and reducing inflammation by three things. One, it helps increase the body's own cytokines that are anti-inflammatory. So cytokines are these inflammatory molecules. Some of them reduce inflammation, some of them create inflammation, and some of them help regulate the inflammation. And so hyperbaric has this way of reducing the inflammatory cytokines, has a way of increasing the body's own anti-inflammatory cytokines, but it also helps balance the regulatory cytokines as well, the ones that are trying to keep balance between the inflammatory cycle and the anti-inflammatory cycle. So hyperbaric got this real robust effect on managing inflammation inside the body. Red light has an effect on COX-2. And so as red light has an effect on COX-2, it also has the ability to reduce inflammation inside the body. So there are three different pathways that there's amazing synergy between red light and hyperbaric on the inflammatory cycles, on the free radical scavenging ability of th those two modalities to help reduce free radical damage inside our cells, and also our ability to really push the mitochondria to make ATP and to increase the energy cycle inside those cells. I hope that helps you understand the synergy between red light therapy and hyperbaric and how those two can really come together. A question that really comes from that is often, well, how should I use them? Should they come together? Should one be before the other or vice versa? Big picture, I believe that if you're using both on a regular basis, it probably won't matter too much. But if you really wanted to optimize it, I believe doing red light, depending on the device, anywhere from 10 to 20 minutes worth of red light, right before going into the chamber is probably its best use. The red light, in addition to the other benefits that we described, the red light also has a vasodilation effect. So it increases the blood vessel diameter. And then going into the chamber where we're gonna now load oxygen into those blood vessels, I think that's probably the best way to combine those therapies to get the most out of it. Okay, hope that helps and uh, we'll see you next time. So whether you're a chiropractor or a naturopath or an acupuncturist, or a DO, or even an MD, but you're looking at hyperbarics through this lens, the lens that I'm describing, which is applying hyperbarics for all these off-label conditions, this is the class that teaches that. And right now it's the only class that teaches this type of hyperbarics in this way, and that's an actual certification course. Check out hbotusa.com, and uh, right across the, the top you'll see upcoming events. You can click on that, and it'll show you uh, when our next courses are gonna be.